Welcome to the Viewless Wings Poetry Podcast, where we celebrate the craft of poetry. Each week, we feature interviews with incredible poets and artists, including Olivia Gatwood and A.E. Stallings, and original poetry read by the authors. I'm your host, James Moorhead, poet laureate of Dublin, California, and author of Canvas and Portraits of Red and Gray. For National Poetry Month, the next two episodes of the Viewless Wings Poetry Podcast feature poems currently on display in the city of Dublin's first ever poetry walk. Each poem is introduced and read by the poet. 26 local businesses and organizations across Dublin, California are featuring the submitted poems, and a map of all locations is available on viewlesswings.com. Hello. It's James Moorhead, Poet Laureate of Dublin, California. I wrote this poem as part of my duties as Poet Laureate and to recognize the 40th anniversary of the founding of Dublin, California. I first read this poem at a City of Dublin Council meeting. At the Crossroads. Two decades ago, we drove over the Sinol grade, our move out west a blur. A colleague suggested Dublin, no more familiar than the collage of cities between Oakland and San Jose. We made our new home here on a parcel carved from rich clay soil surrounded by immigrants like us, a diverse chorus of voices, languages, and cultures. In time, neighbors became friends. We learned about the Muwekma Ohlone surveying hills and valleys for 10,000 years and of missions and prospectors, their names embossed on school signs from Murray to Fallon to Kolb. We felt Dublin winds soar over Schaefer Ranch, Pacific fog in tow, basked in midsummer's endless blue and awoken to mountains draped in white by a fierce winter storm. We've argued at board meetings, as families do, passionate and proud, then reconciled in churches and playgrounds, in backyards and bleachers, and shoulder to shoulder, cheering Irish dancers and marching gales in an emerald parade. We've held hands in prayer as loved ones passed or drifted away, Yet, we'll always be here, gathering at the crossroads for the promise of tomorrow. Hello, my name is Morgan Lippart. I'm a poet currently living in Colorado. My work has appeared in journals and anthologies all over the world at this point, mostly the US, Canada, and England. I do have a poetry book that's out right now titled Barefoot and Running, and the poem that I'm reading for you today is from that book. It's titled The Current Scene of My Childhood Home. And the inspiration behind this poem is, it's about coming to a place of peace and forgiveness around kind of the harder things that happen in our childhood. And as an adult looking back and deciding to kind of forgive and let go of all of that. So here it is, the current scene of my childhood home. The bees are circling something warm and sweet in the yard. I was something warm and sweet in the yard once. The sky was the same color as a slow ache for years, but now it's blue, just blue. Now comes the unfolding of prairie cones and wild indigos, dotting color between the trees, as if nothing had ever happened here. But I happened here. In dreams, my memories are something that can be undone, like a leaf falling upwards, as if a flutter of small hands, tender and purposeful, never struck the sandpaper of a matchbox again and again underneath the porch until everything I knew was black dust. As if I never believed we could have started new if just given the chance. But still, 
now. A breeze-scented chamomile sweeps through the tall grasses, the leaves, past rabbits drifting to their dens. It's as if the land itself was healing, slowly forgetting. I want to heal too. I want to rush back, put my palms to the earth and say, I'm forgiven, I'm forgiven. My name is Laura Isabella Amsel. I was born in the Mississippi Delta, but have lived most of my life in and around Jackson, Mississippi. I hold an MA in Spanish from Middlebury College. Currently, I'm studying with the poet John Davis. My work has appeared in the Gordon Square Review, the Arlington Literary Journal, Crosswinds Poetry Journal, and Microcosmos. I was the winner of Microcosmos 2022 Poetry Prize, judged by A.E. Stallings. This poem is one of many I wrote in the aftermath of a devastating betrayal, a betrayal that forced me to reinvent myself like a molting bird casting off damaged feathers. Collecting Feathers, February Mornings. Among mockernut and sugar maple, pawpaw and red oak, I hunt for feathers. You should know they never fill the empty pockets of my sweater. I'm only collecting evidence my life will grow back kneeling to brush aside leaf litter and lichen, verdigris green and leathery white. I'm only searching squirrel furrowed dirt, grass and flattened furrows where the deer bed down, cane break, pines, the juniper grove. You should know I'm only teaching my eyes to look up from the floor, from fallen leaves, from pine needles, into the hickory on the clearing's edge, at the ridge crest, to find a goldfinch, refeathered, yellow, preened to glowing. Hi, my name is Connie Hanstead. I was raised in the Midwest and currently reside in Livermore, California. I've been an English teacher, copy editor, and CFO and co-founder of a general contracting company, but nothing has been as significant or life-changing as being a writer. My poems have appeared in numerous literary journals and anthologies. They explore the integral aspects of family, memory, loss, and redemption. My chapbook, Treading Water, was published by Finishing Line Press in February 2022. She Writes Press published my memoir, Don't Leave Yet, How My Mother's Alzheimer's Opened My Heart, in 2015. I'm also a member of the California Writers Club Tri-Valley Branch, where I lead the Poetry Critique Group. Although we write in isolation, we meet and offer support, encouragement, and validation, which are key to becoming better writers. The poem I'm reading today was inspired by my father, whose love of gardening softened his hard exterior. Lessons. I'm pinching p- tomato plants and basil, pruning the purple morning glory as hummingbirds dip and dive on currents of memory. I smell the damp earth and recall my father's muddied hands digging in his garden. Never crowd seeds together, he said. Give them room to grow. It was his confidence I loved then, his hearty laugh, his cotton rolled up sleeves swiping sweat from his brows. Now, as I fill a watering can, I see him sprinkling his neat rows while eyeing the raspberries that separated our yard from the next. All summer, I picked crimson clusters before supper. When humid air retreated and my skin felt the first cool rush of evening, sparrows settled in the maple and the earth grew quiet. As my father lounged on the porch with his pipe and a book in his lap, I understood the importance of a job well done. Shoulders lightened, breaths deepened, muscles softened like silky threads of moonlight. Fifty years later, and I still hear his voice, coaxing tomatoes and carrots to rise, praising soft rains, their tender ballads of hope. Hi, my name is Abby Lynn Reyes, and I'm a poet and educator living in the California Bay Area. My work has appeared most recently in Free Verse Revolution Issue 1, as well as Free Verse Revolution's first print anthology. 
I'm a member of the California Writers Club, Tri-Valley Branch, and I'm currently working on my first poetry book. You can connect with me on my Instagram at a.l.rays, where I routinely post favorite lines, excerpts, and drafts of my original work. To give you a little background on my poem, Overture, I want to take you back to this last new year. I was starting to feel like I was on the precipice of change. I had felt like we'd gotten through the worst of that pandemic period where I was feeling very drained and empty. So I was starting to feel like myself again. I was starting to get re-energized. And I really just wanted to tap into that feeling and let it resonate. And in doing so, I, I realized that as individuals, we have such a capacity for strength and renewal. I just think that most people tend to underestimate themselves, myself included. So I was just imagining a moment when stepping up onto this stage, metaphorically speaking, and truly owning that space, feeling the magic of one's own being and power and capacity for greatness. Now, the title Overture For those who might not be aware, uh, an overture is an orchestral piece at the beginning of an opera or play, and it also is an introduction to something more substantial. So I just found it so fitting, Um, this idea of the beginning of something. And I just think that we deserve to put ourselves front and center and celebrate our own potential, know that we can do this. At any time, we can start anew and tap into that greatness and celebrate it. So hopefully this poem inspires you to feel the same way. Overture. This is phase one, the opening act. A moon glow belonging to all who cast shadows beneath it. This is the casting call, a star-painted landscape spectators of your insurmountable force. This is your unfathomed moment, the air vast in weeping for the presence you consume. Yesterday's act, a receding appearance, a decayed root dissolving and gone. Your capabilities transform the dimensions of today. Today you will dazzle, your smile suspended, just waiting for the splendor of a realm unentered. Raise the curtain and feed on the annihilating presence, the night's heartbeat, a thunderous applause to the radiance of you. Thank you. My name is Amy Holland, and I am a poet, visual artist, and business consultant from Jamestown, New York. The inspiration for offering came during a walk in the woods. I picked up a buckeye that had fallen to the ground and noticed the perfect imprint of a heart upon its smooth, shiny skin. It was a reminder of how nature heals us and how random moments of beauty and grace soften us and break us open to give and receive love. The poem was written for a friend on a milestone birthday, but it has come to be an anthem for hope in difficult times. May I present to you this gift, this offering. My morning walk presents an offering. Tucked among a thicket of copper leaves rests a single buckeye round and smooth, with a pale heart etched upon its chestnut skin. I pick it up and hold it in my hands, amazed that such a wonder can be found in the mud and muck of the woodland path. But isn't that the mystery of grace, how we are broken open by small things and laid bare for the world to do its work of forming us into a better shape? In faith, I press the Buckeye's heart to mine and wish for you a blessing, knowing this It is a gift to love and to be loved. Hello, I'm Rebecca Cristante, and I'm a visual artist and writer from Decatur County, Georgia. 
I'm glad to be here on the Viewless Wings Poetry Podcast. Being fortunate enough to grow up close to nature in the rural South has really shaped how I view environment as an artist. I think a lot about human interaction with environment and how that shapes our realities. So this woman versus nature theme is often present in my work. The poem I am about to read is a reflection on one of those rare moments in life when everything seems to fall into place. When even for just a few seconds, you can pause the constant future plotting and planning, and instead of remembering all of the things, you can just sink into the present and absorb those details as they come to you, then let them drift on past you. Or, if you're like me, write a poem about it. Perfect Day If I could go back to a perfect day, The sun is shining through an open window. The air smells fresh of soap and dirt and pollen as the floor dries from a fresh mopping, and we are sitting, having coffee. Thanks for having me, viewless wings. Y'all take care. Hi, my name is Marie-Anne Poudre. I was born in Bordeaux, France. Before settling in Dublin, California, In 2014, I moved 23 times, living in three continents. My father, a reporter for a news agency, towed my family to Western Africa. In what shocked Mauritania, my first words were not in French, but Hassania, a local Arabic dialect. I grew up hearing several languages for four years before my family moved back to France. I discovered Auvergne, Brittany, Normandy and Burgundy throughout my grade and college years. I was a French major and graduated in 1993 from the University of Dijon in Burgundy, France. I was a certified professor des écoles for the French Education Nationale and the French as a foreign language teacher. In 1998, my husband, Dominique, moved our young family to England. I took a break from teaching to be a homemaker with my newborn baby and my toddler. Blessed with a third child, my family moved to the barrier in 2005. I resumed my work as a teacher in the San Francisco Peninsula. In 2014, my family bought a house and moved to Dublin. Settled at last, I took a break from teaching French and started to write in English and took several English courses at Las Positas College. My classmates and teachers encouraged me to keep writing. Despite the French accent I cannot shake off, my poems charmed the listeners. I joined the Travelly Writers Club a few months before the pandemic started. I love my Dublin community and the opportunities the tri gives artists to take wings and fly. You can find my poem in Voices of the Valley Through the Window, 2020, A Nobody's Soliloquy, or Inside Brilliance, Havoc, 2021, 13 Stripes, More Than Me, The Good and the Talented. Double Take 2022, Hope, Faith and Desire. And Dublin Poetry Walk 2022, Hope. Hope is an ekphrastic poem. This Greek word is a mouthful, but its meaning is simple. It's a poem to describe a painting. The poem Hope describes red poppies a watercolour painting from artist Meghna Mitragotri. What can I describe? The eye of the beholder is entirely able to understand the dainty made field flowers Meghna painted on a canvas. What Hope tells the bystander is a story about these red poppies. Because I come from a family of veterans and active military personnel, The meaning of these symbolic red flowers fills my heart. Since the Canadian soldier 
Major John McRae wrote in 1915, In Flanders fields the puppies blow, between crosses, row on row. The red puppies symbolize the dead soldiers. We are the dead. The red poppies are also the flowers worn to honor the veterans in our community. In 2021, American soldiers came back from Afghanistan in our city. Dublin, California is the hometown of soldiers back from that place where wars are never won. Red poppies should grow in our streets to acknowledge the service of all wars veterans. Meanwhile, veterans may register at Las Positas College and take an English writing class with Professor Jim Ott to heal and write their wars till their red poppies grow. Hope. Back from the land where purple poppies grow. Back from that place where wars are never won. The soldier walks home when her eyes stumble over small flowers as red as the sun. Like friends from her past cheering her return, fragile poppies lift their heads one by one. A hand reaches out to touch their blossom, but drop as it brushes against her gun. Frail but glorious, the cups won't bow down to the power of powder and weapon. Thou, the soldier, stands erect and fallen, brimming their lift-up promises to come. All is not lost. Take our seed for you to sow. Heal and write your war till your red poppies grow. Hi, I am Ashmeet, a 10th grader at Amador Valley High School in Pleasanton, California. I absolutely love to read and write, and poetry is one of my favorite ways to express my feelings and thoughts. I have a writing column on the Patch Online newspaper as well, where I publish my own and other people's writing to the community. Other than writing and reading, I enjoy dancing, singing, badminton, playing the violin, and spending time with my family and friends. This poem is a poem about the trait of ego. This is something that is seen in everybody at different levels regardless of age. As a teenager, I see this trait inside and all around me. It's very important to be aware of it because everyone has the ability to manage the extent to which they allow this feeling to take over them. So I put my opinions about this topic in the form of poetry to share with everyone. Ego's Kingdom There are coals that burn inside of you. They're embers dissolving through your skin, powering the fire within you as it slowly lights and dims. There is an enemy that resides in this palace set ablaze. The thief that steals your virtues, ego is its name. Its throne is a learning barrier with a path made of want, towers made of self-absorption and huge rooms that haunt. The fire that encases the palace is fueled by need, its flames burning when you feel inferior, the need to be in the lead. When the thief conquers yet another palace, it puts sunglasses to cover your eyes. They are there to get rid of the good in you. They act as your permanent disguise. Slowly and slowly, the thief's kingdom spans head to toe, taking what's in its path, spreading embers that still glow. Slowly and slowly, you begin to change your ways. As ego takes its place in you, you get lost in the maze. How to rescue oneself from this trap of burning fire is a question of morality and choosing what's correct over desire. The power of satisfaction can help extinguish the burning coals. It can get rid of the self-conceit and instead build a palace of gold. It's important to be passive, down to earth and open, all while achieving your aims, for this is how you can step out of the fire and escape ego's flames. Thank you. Hello, this is Jessica Fox. I'm a conservation biologist by training, and I help large companies be more sustainable and think about their ecological footprint, um, mostly for water and biodiversity. 
But I do creative writing on the side, uh, and this is actually the first poem that I've ever submitted or shared with anybody, and I'm excited that it got selected for this competition. It is inspired um, by a real neighbor down the road, so this is actually based on, uh, based on true stories. It's called Eight Cats. The old lady down the road has seven cats. I know why. I know why she has those cats. The neighbors watch on, shaking heads at her frisky yard. She doesn't come to the block parties. We've only seen her shadow behind backlit curtains. The cat lady is what we call her. She grabs at those cats, stuffing them into the center of her chest. Arms stretch to both sides, right hand, then left hand, then right, pushing the fur into her hollow circumstance. Her ribs are slowly cracking, fracturing, then snapping, her chest collapsing into itself. It's hard to breathe, no warmth or kids or friends to keep the structure of her soul filled. The abandoned cats need her, and she needs that. She uses them to stuff and stuff and stuff. Fur tufts cling to her pants and peek out of her collar. But that hole in her soul still howls and rocks when it is quiet and the cats are curled and purring around her. Why does it still hurt? Seven cats may not be enough. One more will do the trick. Eight will help, at least for today. She pulls the eighth cat towards her and he is happy to oblige and she feels better. I know why she has those cats. I know that hole. Cats I do not have. Eight cats are clearly too many, as we have all discussed at the block parties. I only have three dogs, seven fish, and nine chickens. Hi, I'm Michael Watterson. The inspiration for my poem, Gone Train Blues, was the romance and nostalgia of America's railroads and their impact on our folk music. The small town I grew up in had a train station that had fallen into disuse and disrepair by the time I headed west in the 1970s. A retired journalist, I was born and raised around Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, an industrial city full of train tracks. I hold degrees in creative writing and poetry from San Francisco State and Mills College. My career includes stints as a firefighter for the U.S. Forest Service, a San Francisco taxi driver, and a wine educator. My poems have been published in numerous online and print journals, and I'm Poet Laureate Emeritus of the Napa Valley. My first collection of poems is scheduled for release later this year. For more information about my poetry and my new book, contact me at facebook.com slash Michael Watterson, on Twitter at M underscore Watterson, or visit my website, michaelwattersonpoetry.com. Gone Train Blues Listening to Sam McGee's flying fingers, flat-picking railroad blues, my phantom tears fall for all the railroads sidetracked long ago, Faded names on empty boxcars shunted onto rusted spurs. Chesapeake in Ohio, Erie, Lackawanna, Illinois Central cannonballing into legend. Once bustling stations retooled to postcard museums where shadows endlessly pass, calling all aboard, echoing a slide guitar strum picking up steam, hauling broken hearts down the line to nowhere, each passenger's last dime, dropping through the holes in their pockets as they lug suitcases full of enough ache to make anyone sing the blues. So if your lover soaring away on a silver bird into the blue knocks you to your knees, sends you crawling to the crossroads to bargain for your soul, no demon talent will possess you, fret your fraying heartstrings, or moan your low-down pain for the masses' adulation. For the devil packed his dignity and left you, baby, with no tracks to roll on down. Hello, everyone. I'm Peggy Schemmelman, a poet, 
short fiction writer and a novelist from Livermore, California. For information about my published work, please visit my website at PeggyShimmelman.com. I'm also a lifelong music lover as well as an amateur musician and songwriter, so music often colors my writing. The poem I'm going to read is one example. It was published by the Wild Musette Journal a few years ago, and it's called A Poem in Three. As you may know, in music lingo, a song in three is a song in three-quarters time. Make me your love song in three-quarter time. Conjure me, count me in, one, two, three, one, two, three. Whisper me, whistle me, dance me, romance me. Woo me, infuse me with rhythm and rhyme. I'm a Viennese ballroom, a Tennessee dive. I'm denim and crinoline, sawdust and silver. Seduce me, unloose me, unwrap me, undo me, inhale me, consume me. I'm whiskey, I'm wine. I'll waltz across Texas. I'm Norwegian wood. I'm Strauss and Chopin, Jolie Blonde, Clementine. So wrangle, untangle me, Mr. Bojangle me. I'm Amazing Grace, Sweet Betsy from Pike. I'm Scarborough Fair on a Moon River night. Piano man stun me, come fiddle, strum, drum me, croon me, retune me, twirl and unfurl me, swing me and sing me in three-quarter time. Thank you very much for listening. My name is Linda Drattel. I have been dabbling in poetry since my teens, and The Torrent and the Tree is one of my earliest poems. My poetry and short story fiction have been published by Viewless Wings Publisher, Wingless Dreamer Publisher, and Prompt for the Planet. A collection of my poetry has been selected to be published by Finishing Line Press. I've been deafened since my 30s and have had to relearn to navigate social, professional, and family relationships. I've chronicled, I've chronicled this process in my nonfiction writings, which have been published in an anthology, newsletters, and magazines. In this poem, I want to depict the strength of the human spirit, no matter the odds. For me, this poem reflects my intense desire to be counted as a life worth living despite my being deaf. This poem has also resonated individually with friends who are combating difficult illnesses. It is also meant to represent the will of an entire people who deal with oppression. I can be followed on Twitter. My handle is at Linda Directel at L-I-N-D-A-D-R-A-T-T-E-L-L. -L. And my website is lindadrattel.com. And now for the poem. The Torrent and the Tree. Why does it struggle so? Its branches tremble and shiver against that which will inevitably overcome it. The biting rain flogs its leaves. The raw wind mauls its branches. The irate river, pulsing and rupturing the embankment, whips up slumbering silt and loosens the hold of its roots. Lawless rapids sweep around it triumphantly, dragging the tree to a slow and prostrate death. Yet it resists, as if sheer will can repel the forces which assault it. A few extra minutes of life worth the agony. The tree twists and twines with a pluck it did not know it possessed. Its pale soul refuses the sweet death that beckons. It seems to know why it is there. Its defiant arms are streaked with rugged lines from splintering rock cracks. Its trunk scarred with raw nubs where young branches, fanning budding leaves, once grasped the sky. As it sings to the will of the aggressor, the trembling forest bears witness, comprehends it is the tree which has overcome the torrential waters. Its measure, now resting in long overdue quietude, gazes gratefully at heaven, for not even death can erase those precious defiant moments it spent on earth. Hi, I'm Liz. I live in the Tri-Valley and write short poems 
as well as translate poems from modern French poets. My husband and I enjoy walking, travel, gardening, attending concerts, and all that the Bay Area has to offer. I wrote a remembrance thinking back on a trip to the Mediterranean, especially the sites of French and Italian culture, their fascinating history, and old ruins in walled cities. A remembrance. Pockets of wildflowers herald the arrival of spring in the valley, arising from a dormant tempo. Intervals of these violets and lilies of the valley colorfully burst as they climb the hillside. Underneath, the color of the earth, which lay fallow, deepens to umber. Turkey feathers flutter and fly around as the males peck at last year's corn. A melange of tawny earthenware and sculptured gardens dot the hillside. A path of speckled stones in thunder gray streaks toward town and skirts its granite walls arriving at arched doorways. When a scooter passes, grainy specks kick up, then settle down in an old courtyard. Fountain's marble face, indignant mistress of the court, foams and gurgles at a stranger who pauses for a look, then chases him away with her splashes of water. Crumbling feta, freckled faces, a bronze statue, an arbor about to burst with spring, this vivid wide angle photo you took from our hotel balcony last March. The Viewless Wings Poetry Podcast is written and produced by James Moorhead. You can follow me on Twitter at Dublin Ranch. Subscribe to the Viewless Wings Poetry Podcast and follow us on viewlesswings.com or on Instagram at viewlesswings.